All right, so this is my Ender Extender converted printer. It's the 400 by 400. However, it is not the XL, so it's still got the stock 250 millimeter Z height. The point of this video is really just to showcase all of the mods that I've done to it, mostly the 3D printed mods, which you can find a link to in the description to download all of them. I made a collection on printables, which I've honestly becoming uh, more and more of a fan of as opposed to Thingiverse, which seems like it's just kind of falling into decay uh, as the admins and developers are not really putting forth much of an effort. But anyway, um, I have another video that I, I also posted around the same time. I think the link I'll go ahead and just put down there too, which is around 45 minutes, really just going through the build process, not really so much the installation steps, but it's mostly focused on the gotchas, the tips and tricks along the way, and other other ideas that I thought were worth mentioning for anyone else building an Ender Extender kit. Without further ado, let's go right into it. I'll start with the 3D printed mods and then we'll come back to the other mods. So right away, um, Y-axis tensioner. So in my main video, kind of going over the Ender Extender assembly gotchas and stuff like that, I, I did talk about this a little bit. They did include a tensioner solution. However, it was more or less a like-for-like -like replacement of the stock Ender 3 tensioner, which is of course manual. So I took a CR10 design and I remixed it, and this uses the stock M8 bolt that Ender Extender gives you in their kit. So I had to design a couple little extra odds and ends, and then it uses an M6 bolt here for the, the tensioning mechanism, but it's, it's super secure. Um, there's also some M4 bolts that go through with T-nuts that actually lock it into position so that it eliminates the wobble that I was kind of experiencing with the unremixed design. Anyway, um, that functions exactly how you'd expect, not a lot else to say about it. I did find it incredibly annoying to tension this super long belt. It's got to be twice as long as the original Ender 3 Y-axis belt, so definitely a must-have. Likewise, on the X-axis, a similar thing going on here. Um, it's just, again, exactly what you expect. It's just a knob-style tensioner, and uh, you can you can really easily set your desired tension. That feels about right. Uh, the main remix aspect that I did on this was on my Ender 3. So this started life as a non-pro Ender 3. And the M8 bolt that used to be here back when there was a 2020 extrusion as the Y-axis, well, that was of course replaced by this new one that came with the kit. So with the old one, I moved it over here and just used an M8 lock nut and I added some spacers that I designed in SolidWorks, so this design is uh, basically adapted now for this. So again, um, this will all be in the printables collection that I've shared, and the attribution is there as well. This, a lot of this was a remix, so. Moving right along, so that's uh, Y, X, and then on the Z, I've actually done a dual Z conversion. Now I couldn't find a dual Z conversion that I really just fell in love with. Uh, there were a couple designs and a lot of those designs each had one or two things that I thought were really uh, well done so I kind of just took the best of all of them and then there were some original parts as well. So the tensioner assembly here, this is a completely original design and it just uses these generic, uh, I think they're 688 2RS bearings. Um, yeah, it's just everything's 3D printed as much as I could get away with. And as you can see, it's it's a timing belt design, so you can loosen these lock nuts and, and adjust it as needed, but I, I had no problem getting this tension just so. At the top here, you have these ordinary GT2 pulleys. I want to say they're 20 teeth. There's one on each side. Again, you're going to see the, the same bearings, the 288, sorry, 688 2RS bearings. There's a, a total of two in each of these carriers, so across the entire system there's eight of those bearings, and then a second lead screw, and then down here is a 3D printed bracket that I've remixed. I remixed it in a couple ways, uh, notably one to uh, space this gap out here so that the actual printed bracket isn't contacting the outer race of the bearing, causing these rollers to drag. That was a problem in the original design that I found. So uh, it does kind of increase the printing complexity because you've got to 
have supports there as it's being printed, but you know, whatever. If you're doing this conversion, I'm assuming you can figure out things like that. Um, and then I also modified it to accept one of these Ender 3 style lead screw nuts. So I had a POM material one. I don't know what that was on my hand. <laughs> Sorry. So you can also use a RepRap style one, which I think I have one over here. So you can kind of see these, these bronze material lead nuts. There's two of them just against each other. I do have a design that's also on the on the uh, printables page for this conversion that uses that style. So you have two options there. And I am using an anti-backlash nut just because that's just what I had in my parts bin. Besides that, it's uh, not a lot else to say. It's just a, a, a very nice dual Z conversion and it's very smooth. I apologize, Mike. I'm filming this with a smartphone and the focus is not really its best feature. But to accommodate the dual Z, I also had to, of course, space out the power supply away from the back of this extrusion. So to do that, I whipped this up in SolidWorks, which uh, not only is the focus not great, but neither is the, the lighting ability. <laughs> so you can kind of see it here. It's, it's nothing more than a PETG printed piece, which simply goes on to your base extrusion here using two four sorry two m4 nuts and uh, teen man i'm sorry <laughs> two m4 bolts and t nuts and then of course it's affixed to the back of the power supply there's also a ground wire that has to be run you can see it it's this yellow and black wire and i've just got it kind of going into this extrusion here and then there's a uh, a ground lug on your power supply and that's simply because the uh the power supply is now isolated when you do this. Originally it would be bolted to this extrusion where it would have a path to ground, but we've taken that away by going to a plastic bracket. So it's not a big deal. It's just, um, it's a good thing to do. So that takes care of that. In my video, the full video, I talked about putting the stock Ender 3 display on the front of this 2020 extrusion. If you build this per the instructions, they suggest that you sandwich it kind of see if I can maybe show you better on this side. Just imagine a mirror image of this. You see where this 2020 extrusion meets this this 4040 extrusion. They wanted you to sandwich it between the two. Which to me, I, I was a little bit averse to because A, it would bring the, the frame out of squareness. You know, I mean, I spent quite a bit of time with a carpenter square making sure that everything was perfectly 90 degrees when I tightened all my bolts. But also, it, not only besides looking janky, you can only get one of these two bolts through just due to the, um, you would actually need to drill a hole here, theoretically. And you can use one bolt, it's not, that's, that's not the problem, it's just that it, it cuts into the stiffness of the frame, which to me is already a bit compromised just due to the, the sheer size of it. So I thought that the easiest thing to do would actually be to just print a simple bushing and you'll see me talk about this in the longer video, and let me see if I can kind of prop it up to show you. It's it's black, so it's it's not going to be easy to focus on, but you can kind of see it here. Um, those two silver button head screws, the bottom one, if you look at the uh, that little cylindrical piece between the the display front and the extrusion, it's just a 20 millimeter long cylinder with an M5 bore. And it just allows me to simply put in this lower bolt. Behind this um, is actually one of the shorter bolts that's included with the kit. You just can't see it because the display is covering it up. So there are actually two M5 screws holding on this 2020 extrusion to the 4040. It's just that only one of them is coming through to this side of the display. And then there's a second one down here, which is purely just to you know, hold the display with two points. So that allowed me to put the display right up here, like stock, and I was confused why that wasn't provided in the original kit with slightly longer bolts, which you will need by less than five millimeters, but these were just some that I had lying around. So anyway, uh, moving on from that, there are the storage bins. So let me move the bed back here. They're gonna be a little bit hard to see just because I can't move the bed back any further than this. 
but I designed these in SolidWorks, so they're uh, a really nice fit. They're designed just for this, so they go back to here, and it's just exactly what it sounds like. Just a nice bin to put all your, your tools and shit in. So, and on the bottom of this is, it's actually a TPU little mat, just a, a nice touch. So that's, again, on the printables page, the, the TPU mat, and then the actual display. It mounts in three places um, with T-nuts. One is to the bottom of this Y-axis gantry, and then the other two are, are just here to this 4040 extrusion. So it's really, really solid and secure. It's not flexy at all. I took the liberty as well of adding a second one. So let me slide this forward. You can actually see it. A better view of this one back here so it's exactly the same um, it's mounted again just one t-nut there and then there's there's two down here and I just use this back one to put I have a Raspberry Pi Pico that I use for my uh, input shaper tuning with clipper and then just some other little odds and ends so that was really uh, really nice and you can kind of also this is kind of a view of the 24 to 5 volt converter that I have for running my orange pie as well as the LED strips which we'll come back to in a minute. As far as other 3D printed mods, so if you kind of look closely, you see those blue washers right there? So in my main video I talked about this, the limit switch doesn't really sit flush on this little adapter that's included in the kit and I think that's just because of the Maybe the, the limit switch had bigger solder blobs than average. I don't really know how, if there's any consistency with what Creality ships out, and I don't really blame Ender Extender for not having every single one accounted for, but I did end up having to print these just so that this limit switch wouldn't be at an angle. So again, they're just, they're just simple shims, I think, with an M3 diameter, and there's not much really else to talk about there. So, those are the main ones that functionally affect the Ender Extender kit and how it works. As you could probably tell, there's a lot of other 3D printed bits on this uh, that I'm not really going to go through in depth. One of them, though, um, are these drawers here, which I really like. And I, I have this on my, my main printer as well. And this is just a nice double drawer, so I got my nozzles, the glue stick. It's just a nice thing to have. I mean, this is not really being used for anything else. I've got the Logitech C270 camera there. Just a pretty common uh, articulated little mounting arm that I found online. And then uh, I've got a couple things like the lower filament guide with a, a little skateboard bearing in it and this upper filament guide. Nothing really too exotic. And then... Uh, Let's talk about some of the other ones so that, that are not 3D printed. So the, the, the big one is the Scarelite bed. So this was a piece of, originally it was a 24 by 24 inch piece and I got it on eBay for, I want to say it was around $23 including shipping. And I just simply used an angle grinder to cut it down to size. It's about 405 by 405 is the actual edge to edge dimensions. So, not a big deal. Um, everything's been sticking really nicely. So this is a print I just finished about 10 minutes ago. It's, it's PLA. However, I've been using nylon and uh, PETG and everything just sticks to it really, really nicely. No glue stick at all. So anyway, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really happy with this. I need to kind of work on my retraction settings a little bit still, but anyway. This is a great bed. Um, it was a little bit warped. However, I'm just using these bed clips here that they're just the same ones that you'll find if you search bed clips on Amazon or anything else. And that's been, been working out great. So I, uh, I, have, I have an ABL probe and I've been doing a 7x7 seven seven mesh. And then on the bottom of that, I've got this really thick adhesive backed insulation. So this helps immensely with keeping the bed at a target temperature. So, for example, when I'm printing carbon fiber nylon and I want the bed to be 80 degrees Celsius, it can take 30 minutes to really get it to that level and then to stay there. So this insulation, to me, is non-negotiable. I, I, I can't imagine 
trying to keep it at a nice temperature because I, I print a lot of brackets for just one of my online business ventures and sometimes I'll be printing four or eight at once and some of them are all the way over here where there's no overlap with the actual heater uh, of the heater bed and so I'm really relying on on this aluminum plate to spread the heat evenly but besides that um, another mod I think is is cool and this is absolutely nothing to do with function it's just these LEDs that are, that are around the side and this is something that it's not unique to an ender extender at all it's just a nice thing to have and I'll, I'll cut the printer on so you can kind of see them my fan is also super loud because it's it's an aftermarket fan most people go for a quieter aftermarket fan but I just went for the most airflow because I have an all metal hot end and heat creep used to be an issue for me. So anyway, yeah, the LEDs are a nice touch. There's a little switch somewhere over here for them. I forget where it is exactly. There it is. So I can kind of just turn them on and off like that. I think that's about it. There's a few other cosmetic things I've done. The Setsana fan shroud was not exactly cosmetic. I did that because I'm running a uh, thermistor which it has uh, some stiffener on the end of it. It's like kind of some coiled wire. And it wasn't really able to fit inside the stock heat sink. But this one is nice anyway. I'm not going to go into the topic of fan shrouds and why you should get one or the other. But I think that pretty much concludes this, guys. Um, again, check out the, the printables collection down below. It should have pretty much all these mods. A lot of them are original. A lot of them are remixed as well. So let me know what you think down below, and if you have any other mods that you think are necessary for an Ender Extender or would improve the uh, overall function of it, definitely comment that down below. Thanks.